Oh, yeah. All right, sorry about my lateness, y'all, but uh, I got a good excuse. I was at a radio show, Woo! and a fucking baseball game ran the light. You know, we get, it was like, yo, end this. I got to go, end this, end this. And they just kept on playing, kept on playing. God damn, baseball so boring, yo. Like, but, you know, it's, it's fucked up. Like, the best baseball game is a no-hitter, right? Is a, You ever see a no-hitter? It's the most boring shit ever. It's just two dudes playing catch. It's just like somebody do something. The good games are the games, that's like the amateur games. Because in, in, in MLB and professional baseball, there's no mistakes. It's a rare, rare mistake. But in Little League baseball, amateur baseball, anything can be a home run. Like, like yeah, he liked baseball. He shaped like a big ass baseball, like, big ass dodgeball. It's like he about to just crash through the door like, like the Kool-Aid man and shit. Like, hey, Kool-Aid! That's my man, Johnny Sparkles. We, Johnny Sparkles and Pepper, got our own sports show coming up. It's recorded a whole bunch of them. We got 808 Hot Takes. Look it up. But soon it's going to be all over on the air. We got the radio studio. We got all kinds of stuff going on at 808 Hot Takes. But ladies and gentlemen, we got open mic. And we have a special guest performer, a pro guest host. He said that he don't like being, like, they don't like introductions that are nice and good. He don't like that, so I'm going to introduce him the way he wants to be introduced. This motherfucker is the worst asshole on the whole wide world. I hate his motherfucking guts. I'm going to kick him dead in his chest if he gets close to me. Ladies and gentlemen, my good buddy, here he is, Eddie M. Yeah, I guess so. I don't remember asking for it. But... Oh, welcome. Round two. Saturday night open mic at King's Pizza. Thanks for coming out, everybody. All four people in here. It's good shit. I'm, uh, I'm your host, Kenny Kusaka, again. All right. I'm back on the table. Oh, shit. Good. All right. Uh, so yeah, welcome again. Uh, a round of applause for uh, everybody putting it together. Paco, bring all this shit here all the time. Yeah. Mushroom and the King's Pizza staff. Round of applause, everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And one more round of applause for me. Yeah. Like the attention. All right. All right. I'm hard. Okay. Uh, so yeah, again tonight, same thing as last night. I'm sure everybody knows us how to do it. Put your name on the list. If you want to uh, go up, uh, we get 10 minutes right again. 10 minutes for the first hour or two. Um, then we'll start whittling down the time as the night goes on. Uh, again, you don't have to do your whole time uh, if you don't want to. But uh, if you don't, then you're banned for life. Uh, don't come back. Uh, if you bomb up here again, you're also banned for life. Don't bother coming back. Uh, but other than that, we're going to have a good night. Uh, I'm going to be simultaneously hosting and watching UFC out there, so I'll probably be paying attention to any of you. Uh, and yeah, last thing again, uh, if you see that guy Rohan outside, just watch out for him. He's, uh, he's a sneaky one. You might have seen him on To Catch a Predator or Unsolved Mysteries. But other than that, we're starting a little later tonight because of somebody, but uh, it wasn't me this time. But uh, we're going to start tonight. Bring up your first comic. This is the guy who fucking puts it all together, the host of 808 Hot Takes. I heard they're looking for a new member now. One of them just quit. So uh, give it up for, once again, Mr. Paco Loco. Yay! I can understand how he quit because we didn't get paid for this shit. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy when you achieve all your dreams in life and it comes out to be the worst financial decision ever. You know what I mean? Like, I always want to be a stand-up comedian. I'm a stand-up comedian. That shit paid like $10 a show. There goes my fucking, my whole life right there. That's horrible, man. It's not the only worst decision I made financially either. Like, you know what's the worst financial decision I've ever, ever made? Going to college. Yeah, that's, 
going to college is worse. Oh my God. Like you grow up, you grow up in the hood, they give you all these like the warnings about what's gonna happen in life. Like if you got good mentors, they gonna tell you like, yo, stay away from drugs, stay away from gangs, I mean, all that. It means it's gonna be bad, like don't do that. But nobody warned you about the fucking financial loans. No, that's fuck, no. Yo, how you gonna pay $100,000 for, for one semester and get a $12 an hour job? No. And I'm the top one in my field. That's so fucked up. Like, I'm the top producer in Hawaii. $12 an hour. Like, you know, that's why I started driving an Uber. Yeah, I drive that Uber. But that Uber gets you. You get, you start feeling free real fast, real fast. When you can make it one night, when you can make it a whole week in another job, yeah, I walked into the radio studio with a fucking attitude. Like, no, I'm not doing shit. They like, excuse me, can you make some coffee? I ain't making coffee. I brought my own coffee. Uh, I could afford Starbucks now. You know what I mean? Know. Uber life, man. That Uber life changes your whole game up. But the Uber life also, I don't know. it's crazy because like they be warning you against this thing called sec uh, human trafficking. That's the new thing. They give you all these warnings about human trafficking. They be like, you got to look out for human trafficking. First of all, I don't know what the fuck human trafficking is and shit, so I had to Google it. And they tell you, like, you gotta watch out because these are the signs of somebody's being humanly, human trafficking. If they get in your car and they start talking too much, they might be in a human trafficking. Like, if they get in your car and don't say nothing, that could be human trafficking. Like, if they traveling in the middle of the night with someone else, that could be like, yo, this is, so now, like, I'm just paranoid. Everything to me look like human trafficking and shit, for real. Everything, I thought, Ian, was human trafficking Jasmine earlier. Like, I thought I thought he was doing it, like he's trafficking it. He's getting that, you know what I mean? But then they tell you like, as soon as you get like any type of feeling, this is total caring world right here. Like as soon as you feel it, go call the police. They tell you to call the police, the CIA, FBI, like if you just got a feeling. Not proof, just a feeling, like, oh. So now I'm in my car. All of a sudden, every flag, every red flag goes up. This girl gets in the car, young girl, Hawaiian girl. She gets in the car. She gets in the back seat, starts crying. She's in the back seat crying. I'm like, yo, human trafficking. Like, I know, I know this. I went through, I took the class. I know what I'm doing. So I'm sitting there like, hey, I'm trying to break some conversation. I'm like, how you doing? She's like, oh, I'm just sad. Like, you want to talk about it? No, 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 I don't want to talk about it. So she's like, just take me to the, uh, this guy named Henry House. So we go drop him off, I go get her. The guy gets in the car, it's a young guy. So I'm like, this motherfucker's in a human trafficking. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm trying to listen to their conversation. I'm listening to their conversation. Turns out, her mom died. Oh, shit. Now I gotta call the police and call it off and shit. Like, no, 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 false alarm, false alarm. It wasn't what it is. They were like, excuse me, sir. This is the third time today you don't call in human trafficking. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm part Karen. I'm Puerto, I'm Puerto Rican, but part Karen. Oh, yeah, I'm Puerto Rican, part Karen, you know, like, for real. Like, I'm so Karen that I actually got a job where I'm a professional Karen. Like, I got six jobs, first of all, which means I'm, like, half Jamaican. I know. <laughs> six you Jamaican? How many jobs you got? Uh, shut up. One job! No, you lazy bad, I mean. Oh, I got like six. <laughs> you got, I got six jobs. I'm telling you, I could be an honorary Jamaican. I'm telling you. Okay. I'm telling you, I got six jobs. And one of my jobs is being a Karen. It's called being a residential manager. Yeah. Oh. 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 I don't even knock on people's doors and warn them anymore and shit. Like, as soon as I hear the music too loud, like, Burr. hello? Can I speak to the police? Yeah, we got two people making too much noise. Oh, I be snitching. Oh, I be snitching against my culture. Cause I'm from the hood. And snitches catch stitches. <laughs> Unless you're getting paid for it, then you just an informant, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you get, that's a job, that's a job. I'm from the hood, like I'm from Philadelphia. Born and raised in the playground. It's where I spent most of my days, you know what I mean? So, but it's crazy because you learn more stuff about your city when you're not in the city. Because I've been here in, in Hawaii and I'm learning so much about Hawaii. They got this, y'all can come in, it's plenty of seats. They got this, uh, 
this documentary on Netflix, Urban Cowboys. Have y'all seen this thing? It's a new documentary talking about the, the horse culture. I think they call it equine culture. Philly is a really old city and they actually lobby to have horse stables everywhere. In the hood! In the hood! So in the, you be in the darkest of darkest ghettos doing gangster ass hood shit. So I'm on a corner smoking blunts, drinking a 40, all of a sudden I see a fucking unicorn. Just... I'm like, a unicorn? I'm like, yeah, in the hood? I thought somebody slipped something in my weed. I thought they put PCP, angel dust or something in my weed where I'm seeing things. But no, as it get closer, it's, it's a horse. It's a horse walking up in the hood. Then the guy's like, hey, y'all wanna ride? So I'm like, yeah, I wanna ride. I never rode a horse before. So I'm gonna I get on top of the horse. I get on like this. And then I'm like, giddy up. And the horse look at me like I'm crazy. Let's get the fuck out of here. Like. So I'm like, come on, come on. He didn't move. So then I kicked the horse like, bah! That's when the owner was like, yo, motherfucker, stop kicking my horse. It's still the hood, you know what I mean? It's still the hood. He's about to beat my ass for kicking his horse. But the horse didn't move. Then the owner just did some whistle shit. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he started moving and shit like, oh, damn, I didn't know. I didn't know. So yeah, that's crazy. Like, in the, some stuff you see in the hood that just people won't believe. It's a lot of stuff. I saw stuff in here that I wouldn't believe. Like, I always wanted to be a superhero. Always wanted to be a superhero because I grew up in that age and I always wanted to like, help out people anonymously. And one time, I got the chance to. It happened right here. Right here, there was this, a robbery going on right in front of us, right here. And I hear she, this is woman screaming, help me, help me, he robbed me, he robbed me. So I look out the window and just like in the hood, I turn off the lights and start hiding and shit. I ain't wanna get involved in shit. Like, I don't wanna be next to shit. So they get like right here. The dude turns around and just pops this lady right in the face. Boom! That's when my man, brotherhood, came out like, yo, that's fucked up. You wanna hit a girl like that? Hit me like that. Let's see what happens. So I go and I come out to a little bit down the block. Some other guy saw the same thing. He gets out, puts his hands up. <laughs> The robber punches him too. Boom, knocks him out. Like, oh, I, it's just me and the robber just standing there. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Like, I done seen this dude get knocked out two people already and shit. Like, oh, shit. So I'm thinking, go back to my training of being a fighter. And with the training that came up my head was WWE wrestling. Look at me. <laughs> so I started hearing the music in my head. Dun, 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 dun. Dan and when it comes breaking down you. So I start turning into Hulk Hogan and shit. I start turning into Hulk Hogan. I get him. Then I did a wrestling move on him called the spear. I don't know if you that shit works, yo. If you ever in a fight, just tackle somebody hard as shit. Boom, they never expect it. They never expect it. So I'm on, I did this dude on a spear. I had this guy on the ground. Now I'm lost because that's the end of the fight in wrestling. Then you hit him with the, with the finishing move, it's over, he ain't moving. But I'm sitting there, he's squirming around, squirming around, so I get on top and I'm like, yo, stop fighting, stop fighting. So I put him in like a little chokehold. I asked people all around me, everybody got a phone, nobody called the police. Everybody got their camera on, nobody called the police. I'm like, yo, somebody call the police. They was like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I grabbed my phone, I got this no, real life story. I got this dude in the chokehold, calling the police with one hand, heard the worst thing ever you ever want to hear when you really need the police. You know what's the worst thing ever when you dial 911 in the police? A fucking busy signal. <laughs> A busy signal, 911. Like, oh, so I had to call it again, and then I got him on a second try. I said, like, damn. <laughs> so the police come a few minutes later, I give him, I, I let him go to the police, and, and then I walk away, and I turn out this dude only stole a beer, a beer, and he got, he gonna be doing time, I damn near choked his life out, but I'm being humble, like, I'm not saying I'm a hero, hero, but you know, give it up for me, y'all, cause I didn't save this dude, I done put a credit on jail, my name is Paco Loco, y'all, I'm gonna give it back to Eddie M. True stories from the hood. <laughs> You've been going for Paco, everybody.
Hell yeah. All right. Oh, shit. I always wanted to be a superhero too, man. I just always wanted to like, the only reason I wanted to be a superhero was so I could say like a cool catchphrase, you know? Like I always wanted to walk in somewhere and be like, all right, listen up. I'm only here to do two things. Let's kick some ass and suck some dick. Looks like we're almost out of dick. Yeah. All right. We got some new audience members in here. Hell yeah. Are you guys going up? Ladies? Yeah. Hell yeah. She's crossing her name. I thought you guys were just taking a list of people here. What the hell? Good. Yeah. Just good. Kind of good. Okay, we're good. Uh, who's Johnny, next? Johnny, Johnny. Okay. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, I can just walk over there. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to be on the open mic to order food, though. Yeah, we do. That's a Saturday thing. Every Saturday we do that. You have to do at least five minutes. Okay, that's fine. Hey, no, hey. I'm kidding. They don't do comedy next time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so yeah, if you want to go up again, open mics here. So what brings you guys here then? <clears throat> By the way, they're having their own conversation over here, it's fine. <laughs> if I give you the light like this, so that means you have five minutes left. Okay, five minutes. I mean, we'll start one minute. One minute. Sorry. Yeah. One minute. One minute left. The lights. Okay. So we'll bring up the next comic. Yeah. What the fuck? Why is one through five crossed out? What the fuck? Weird. Well, this next guy is a fucking hilarious guy. It's one of my favorites. He just recently quit the uh, 808 Hot Take show, so he's looking for a new gig. Uh, his last name is Magical, and so are his jokes. So give it up for Johnny Sparkles, everybody. Hey. Hey. It clearly says Sparkles the Comedian on there. You're supposed to introduce me as like a black comic, like, is Sparkles the Comedian? It takes a lot of pressure off when you sign up seventh, and you end up going up second. <laughs> So if I suck, just blame the people who didn't write their names down. I just got in trouble because I thought Eddie was going to bring me up and I got busted for blocking the door. Um, newsflash, I'm always blocking the door. Look at me. It's a fat joke. Uh, I'm going to try and do some new shit here because why not, right? Yeah. Uh, I got fired from Uber Eats, guys. I don't do Uber like uh, Taco because my car is too old, so uh, I have to do Uber Eats. You guys know what Uber Eats is? You pick up food for people and hand it to them and they pay you money for it. I don't know why, but uh, uh, I got fired because I got lazy, basically. I got, I got a little bit lonely, I'm going to be honest. I got fucking lonely and I started picking up the people that order food and asking them to come with me on the ride. It's like, come on, let's go for a ride, guys. Let's hang out. Then I got greedy and started making them go in and get their own shit. I just fucking drove around the block until they got their food. Then I stole a couple pizzas. That's what really happened. So that's what really got fired. Uh, just joking. I don't work for Uber Eats. Gotcha. Uh, I work for DoorDash. <laughs> Boom! I turned. I put the fucking N9 Shyamalan on these motherfuckers. They thought I worked for Uber Eats. I work for DoorDash. I be dashing it up the doors. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna be honest. I don't always dash to the door. They should call it casual, like uh, door stroll when I'm working for DoorDash. And sometimes I just like fucking take my time on that shit. <laughs> uh. I think the reason Bigfoot been hiding all these years is because he got a small dick. Everybody thinks Bigfoot, he must be packing some shit. Nope, he got a little two inch dangler. 
When he's limp, it's even fucking worse. He's like, ah, no pictures, my dick showing, I think. Can you see it? I'm Bigfoot. The reason they don't call me Big Dick. Uh, I always get weirded out. I don't know why everybody does it, but whenever I see people walking their dogs and they pick up the shit with their little baggies, it's very dehumanizing, first of all. Is that Tony Parati? Oh, your hair, man. That's Ian Shippen. Um, Ian, what are you doing? Hi, what are you doing over there? Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> just wondering. Um, the thing is, there's people that love their pets more than their fucking kids. You know these people? They're like, oh, don't go. Like, I'm, a, I'm a dog mom. Yeah, you have a fucking real kid too. Why don't you uh, take, <laughs> take care of her? The thing is, though, they they pick up the shit of these like grown ass dogs. Your dog's like 53 in fucking human years, and you're picking up its shit. And they're, you're real kids. You don't clean up their shit once they're past like. I don't know. How does it work? I don't have kids. Three? I was gonna say that, but I didn't want to sound stupid. Like, that dog ain't gonna clean up your shit when you get fucking old, is all I'm saying. You need your kids to help you when you fucking get old and you can't make it to the toilet. <laughs> now the toilet! And that dog is gonna be dead. And you're gonna wish you, you cleaned up your 17 year old son's shit when he was, uh. <laughs> It's like, you're picking up an adult dog shit, you fucking weirdo. That dog is old enough to be your father. <laughs> Does anybody get mad, like, when you want to do something nice, and then, like, somebody, like, when you open a door for somebody and they don't say thank you? You start off wanting to be nice, and then you're just like, fuck, man. No fucking hope in humanity. Or, like, when you fucking, have you ever, like, meant to do something nice, and you realize you're just an asshole because... I was gonna let this car go the other day, and then the guy in front of me let him go, and I'm like, I wanted to be the fucking guy that let him go. I wanted to be the hero, man. Don't steal my fucking glory. And I'm like, what a selfish piece of shit I am. I didn't want to help that guy. I just wanted to be looked at as a hero. New jokes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, really have a joke for this yet, but I want fucking Vin Diesel. To, if they do another Transformers reboot, I want fucking Fast and Furious to like join with Transformers. And I want the last scene of the last new Transformers movie to like be Vin Diesel just turns into a fucking car. And just fucking drives, it turns into like a Dodge Charger and just fucking drives into the, into the sunset. And you never see him again. Hopefully the real Vin Diesel too, you never see him again. It sucks. Hey. Um, you ever meet the people that, you know when you shake hands, people are starting to shake hands more again because uh, COVID's over, right? And uh, <laughs> in Hawaii we're like, ah, fuck it, we'll shake hands. We'll, we'll, we'll hug you, we'll, we'll fucking do whatever. You ever meet the two hand shaker? The guy that fucking... Like, it's always, he's always spiritual with it too. Like, yeah, bro, good to see you. I recently realized I'm that fucking asshole. Because I used to make fun of those guys, but once somebody does it to you, it's like contagious. You want to do it, so you're just like, hey, Rob, good to see you. If you, meet, if you see Rohan tonight, he will fucking, even if you've never met him, you'll be like, hey, Rob, good to see you, yeah? Two hand, two hand shaker, isn't it? Uh, I saw this guy on a Kamehameha Highway in Kaneohe. He was uh, sitting in a, one of those like beach chairs with the netting, and he had a cardboard sign, and it said, uh, I think I read it here, lost everything, please help. And I'm like, not everything. You still have a chair and a cardboard sign, apparently a Sharpie. Um, you have a cross on your sign, too. I don't know if Jesus can help you, but what would MacGyver do? By now, MacGyver would have fucking built a house with the chair and the cardboard and the Sharpie. And, uh, come on, man. You just gotta take what you have. There's been times when I didn't have much left, you know, and I fucking found a way to get out of it. I have white parents. 
Thank you. <laughs> All I'm saying is MacGyver is your god now, if you're that guy. Fuck the real god. MacGyver will help you more than the real god. It's Saturday, I can say that. It's not Sunday yet. Does anybody else ever, like, this is not, I don't think this is not funny. I'm going to say it anyway. I wrote it down. These are, it's a, that's the rules. If you wrote it down, you have to talk about it. Every time I step off a curb while holding something, I think I'm going to fall. It's only happened like once ever, but um, I always think I'm going to die when I'm holding something and I step off a curb. Maybe it's because I'm built like this. Maybe it's... Uh, it's, your uh, height. it's your height. It is my height, <laughs> yeah. It, every, every step feels like a fucking mountain when you're, when you're this big. Thank you for saying it's my height. That was very, <laughs> very nice of you. He's kind. <laughs> He's very kind, too kind. I had this one joke about how, like, the night before laundry, I love Laundry Eve, I call it, because I fucking, I just fucking shoot my jizz wherever, right? Because it's like, it's all going in the same place. I just fucking, it's great, because you can just come wherever. Like, yeah, pillowcases, fucking, fucking sheets, comforters, just fucking go buck wild in that shit. But I was thinking to myself recently, what if I died on Laundry Eve? My fucking DNA just sprayed all over my room. They're like, what happened to this guy before he died? Just come everywhere. Fucking Jackson Pollock. Uh, call the Jackson Pollock cops here. To, to, <laughs> you guys remember that band Puddle of Mud? The lead singer looked kind of like Eddie. Uh, hat backwards and everything. Do you guys remember that band, Puddle of Mud? Any chance? They had a song called Blurry and She Fucking Hates Me, I think was the other, the other hit. I saw a video of that guy having a meltdown on stage. I think Eddie watched it with me one night. It's just the saddest thing. His band abandons him at some point. His, even his band's like, fuck this shit. This guy is the worst. And he's just sitting there ranting as the crowd berates him. With, they're just like, boo! You suck, and he's just like, I'm part of the mud. I don't have to put up with this shit. I wrote blurry. Everything is blurry to me right now because I'm drunk and my friends don't love me. My band is walking out of me. They fucking hate me. Get off my mud. I'm puddle, I'm muddle of pud. Fuck! I screwed up my own name. I don't even remember my real name anymore. I'm just muddle of pud. Fuck, I did it again. I'm puddle of mud. Everything's so blurry. Get off the stage. Um, Paco was talking about dare earlier. Uh, I want to go to a dare meeting and just be like, Hey man, smoke this shit. I dare you. Do it. <laughs> Resist that. You fucking quitter. You never talk about animal trafficking, just human trafficking. You ever notice that, Paco? Anybody ever traffic a rabbit? I want to traffic a platypus. Anyway, I had fun telling my new jokes. Um, that some of them will make the cut, some of them won't. That's the beauty of comedy. Thank you guys. Have a great night. You got to muddle the pot. Yeah. Fuck yeah. well, yes. I told you he was magical. Sparkles the comedian, everybody. That's dull with the DA. Like Biggie. <laughs> B I G P O P P A. No info for the D E A. You know that you're a big Biggie fan, right, Jeff? <laughs> Fuck yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> a small Biggie fan, maybe? <laughs> All right. Look at me. That, Look that, there you go. I love it, man. I love it. I, I come in the comforter as well, Johnny. Yeah. That's why they call it comforter, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, you guys, we're gonna keep it rolling. Uh, again, the sign-up list is over there if nobody signed up yet. Right? It's going up? Oh, you put in the order in, so you have to go up now. All right. Well, this motherfucker right here, this next guy, uh, he did 20 minutes last night for some reason. Whoa, I don't know why. 
He's got some headlining shows coming up at the Beach House if you want to check him out. My favorite African American. He's a dark skinned white guy. Give it up for Trey Coon, everybody. Trey! Trey. Greetings. One second, guys, we got to set up. All right, I'm set up. Yes. Set down. We were talking about deer. I'm a deer graduate, proud deer graduate. Drug abuse resistance education is what they taught me. And let me tell you guys, I am high as fuck right now. And let me tell you that they lied to me so many times. Because they told me that there's going to be some strangers in a van offering free drugs. They never offered me free drugs. They always try to charge me. And then I found out that it's because I'm not a beautiful woman because I became that guy in the van giving out free drugs to women. I am the story that you hear about. And then for tonight, my set, I'm going to talk about past times where I've gotten high and actually enjoyed myself. So, top 10 times I've ever been high, no particular like, you know, order or anything. One of them was I had just turned 18 and I had bought some mushrooms with my friends, you know, the magic kind. And so we were at the elementary school park because you know, when you're in high school, that's where you do all your drugs is out elementary schools during nighttime. So we're sitting on AstroTurf and I am tripping on these mushrooms. And I had just bought my first pipe. And I was like, yo, I have to name this pipe. And I take a rip out of it while high on these mushrooms, this marijuana. And then I realized, holy shit, Alpha Centauri is the name of this pipe. Two weeks later, my friend calls me and he goes, no bullshitting, Alpha Centauri is the closest star to our solar system. And I was like, fuck, man, I didn't know that. And then years later, I was like, fuck, man, I probably did know that. It was just lost in my mind and then I got high and fucking remembered it. Also, during that same high, I had, uh, well, my full name is Dimitri. I'm not gonna sit down anymore. I don't feel like I have energy to sit. <laughs> so yeah, I had a, I had a, I walked into a tree while I was tripping because, you know, when you're high, sometimes you get the noodle legs, right? And you just can't comfortably walk and control yourself. So I decided to just hold on to this fucking tree. And then I realized that my name is Dimitri named after the Greek goddess Demeter, who is the goddess of fertility and nature and shit. Dimitri, tree, Demeter, tray, trays one letter off of tree. Oh my God, I'm a fucking tree. So I stood there for another three hours, not moving. Ah, uh, yes. Another fun time I did drugs. Um, well, I mean, it wasn't fun. It was fun until it wasn't fun, like most drug trips are. And when I had did this drug trip, I had actually went to a rave, and I had was drinking a little bit beforehand, you know, to get a loosey-goosey. I ate a couple pills of ecstasy, half at a time, I ate two pills of ecstasy, but half at a time because I'm like, oh, I have to control my high. No, you're still eating two full fucking pills of drugs, Trey. Anyway, I'm having a great time. It's raining. I have two hits of acid in my sock wrapped up in foil because I was supposed to give it to a friend at this rave and it starts pouring rain, and that acid happens to melt in my sock while I'm drunk and high on ecstasy. It was cool at first, because I was like, yo, like people started disappearing, it looked like the rapture, where I was like, I can see the stage and like the lights flashing and everything, but I can't see any people, and then I can't hear any music, and then the last thing I remember was falling backwards, and then when I hit the ground, I came back up, and I was in a hospital bed, and I was like, yo, man, dude, this hotel is weird. They got IVs. <laughs> so I start pulling out the IVs. I put on my shoes. I'm walking out the hospital. I had just got there. I was there for all of three minutes by the time I woke up. They're like, no, 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 sir, sir. We're going to need you to sit back down. You have a lot of drugs in your system. And I was like, oh, man, all that time wasted on my DARE certificate. So look at me. <laughs> First overdose. I mean, if you don't count alcohol poisoning, it was my first overdose, you know? <laughs> Another fun time. Ooh, this one also involves hallucinogens. I'm now realizing that these are all hallucinogen-based stories because those are the funnest ones to tell. 
<laughs> this time, I was in high school again. Man, I was fucked up in high school. Confessions of a teenage drug addict, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, while well, I was in high school, I had threw a mushroom party at my house. First of all, if you're gonna do mushrooms with, you know, 12 to 15 other teenagers, don't do it in one fucking house because that's a terrible idea. Because everybody's gonna be in their own little fucking trip and go crazy. Uh, my trip persisted of me being freaked out that my dad was gonna come home at any point. So I kept opening and closing the front door expecting to see him. And then everybody else is having a good time watching Minions or whatever, fucking despicable me. And I'm still freaking out. And then I look at my dog as I'm freaking out because everything's starting to warp and get twisty. And I look at my dog, my dog has a normal face, he's just staring at me. And then pulls one of those because of Win Dixies and just goes, just smiles at me. And I start laughing, like hysterically laughing. And you know when you laugh so hard you start crying? But because I'm on mushrooms, I'm laughing so hard, I start crying and I start bawling my eyes out. Where it gets like really like sad and snotty and like, and why are you crying, Trey? Why are you crying? <laughs> My dogs smiled at me. <laughs> In which case, I immediately start hysterically laughing again to the point where I start crying and then I fall out my eyes again one more time. That cycle lasted about an hour. But then again, I was on mushrooms. So that real cycle was maybe about all of five minutes. But I still remember that because. I love to do hallucinogens. You guys want to hear another one? You guys have heard of synthetic drugs? You ever heard of 2CE, 2CP, 2CI? Oh man, so it's apparently supposed to be like acid, mushrooms, and ecstasy all rolled up into one little fucking capsule. Yeah, yeah and I was at Aloha Tower with my friends. Shit, still a teenager, 17, 18, 19 years old. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try out this new experimental drug that none of my friends have tried before because fuck it, I'm adventurous. So I take the pill, and then everybody's faces disappear. Like, I, like it's like looking, you know that scene from The Matrix where Neo's mouth is closed? But it was their whole fucking face. And I was like, yo, dude, this is not cool at all. I am not having a good time right now. Until my friend comes up to me and he goes, Trey, are you okay? That's a really recurring thing in this story. So everybody's like, Trey, are you okay? Because nine times out of 10, I'm in a corner tripping out. So he comes up and I was like, it's like, no, who are you? He's like, dude, it's, it's me, your friend, Layton. And then the fucking face melts and I can see his face. So then I spent the next two and a half hours of this raid walking around introducing myself to everybody, whether I knew him or not, just so I could watch their face melt. Ironically, they were rolling balls so their faces were already melted by the time I got there. <laughs> Let's see, man, I got a lot of drug stories. Uh, let's see, let's have another fun one. Ooh, here's always a fun one. The first time I got like high, like like weed high. Man, I was been like 13 years old, you know. It's about to, it was the summer right before high school. And my friends were like, hey, your first time smoking weed, you don't really get high. And I was like, oh, what? It's like, yeah, your body doesn't know how to react to it, so you just gotta smoke as much as you can so that the next time you smoke, you get super duper high. <laughs> well, guess what, guys? I got high my first time. You know, remember what was that like the the six million dollar man? He was like running in slow motion. That's that's me full sprint. I thought it was like Naruto. I had my hands behind my back. I thought it was flying. I thought I was making like a new land speed record, and it took me ten minutes to walk like thirty steps. Like I was like, oh man, is this what marijuana is? I never want to do it again. And then I woke up the next morning. I was like, hey bud, do you still have that weed? <laughs> that was some good shit. <laughs> oh man, I should have asked you guys, do you guys like drugs? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like too late now, like, nurses. nurses, ah, ah, they, they probably recognize me as one of my five times of OD, you know? <laughs> They're like, yes to me, Tree Martez Brown, we know exactly who you are. We have your father on speed dial. <laughs> sweet, sweet, so you guys like the legal drugs then? Yeah, and it's like, oh man, <laughs> fuck that methamphetamine shit, but you know, if you give me Adderall, whoo! <laughs> yeah, I'll work that double surf, you know. <laughs> All right, guys, um, hopefully the next person coming up isn't as high or loves drugs as much as I do. Let's give it up for your host, any other guys. Yeah. Yeah. Give it up for Dimitri Brown, everybody. Hell yeah. yeah. 
I didn't know your middle name was Martez. I love that. Is that uh, Mexican? Mexican, right? Yeah. Good shit. Hell yeah, man. Everybody doing good? Yeah. Doing good in here, right? Good pizza. Yeah. You guys got your your material ready when you're going up? Okay. You're coming up soon, that's why. Uh, otherwise, you got to leave. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm not, though. I'm 53 years old. How old are you guys? I don't know. I look good. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm vegan. I fucking... I only jerk off once a month. That's how I keep it. So I keep my youth. Anyway, this is a good beer, Jeff. Appreciate it, man. My man, Jeff. Hell yeah. Um, Trey. Where do you go? He's out there. Oh, okay. Damn, dude. Talking about being on Mushroom all the time, dude. She's right here. What the fuck, man? Jesus. Have some respect. Anyway, we're going to keep it rolling with your next comic. Uh, uh, I've never seen him before, but he looks like a great guy. You know what I mean? Um, I'd let him babysit my kids if I had any. So uh, give it up for Nalu, everybody. Nalu. Hell yeah. Loving it, loving it, loving it. It's my first time here at the King's Pizza Action. Yeah. My name is Nalo. I'm from Waimanalo. How's it? How's it? How's it? Man, I like to ask one motherfucking question. Yes. Where is all those motherfuckers that Dare said was gonna be out there handing out drugs? Where's all those motherfuckers Dare said was gonna be like, hey? Where's that motherfucker at? I like, no. Cause I ain't never seen in my whole life a motherfucker just out there like, hey. And believe me, I've been looking. That motherfucker ain't there. You hear? You know that one mascot we all let down? That motherfucking dare lion. That motherfucker with the red, with the black dare standing there. No, we let that. All of us let that motherfucker down. Motherfucker was like, did you do drugs? Sorry, Lion. Sorry. You can't lie. Like you gotta do a dare set. But yeah, I know, fucking local boy, born and raised from the east side. I'm from the generation where fucking kids got licked. Kids got fucking licked. No pedophile, you <laughs> fucking. Nowadays you see the kids like, Mom! Mom! I want! I want! And the lady's like, No, Timmy, no. I, you didn't do your chores. And this one will just like, Ah! It's Timmy, stop. Ah! No, no, Timmy, Timmy. Ah! Okay, then. And I'm just standing there like, whoop his ass! What the fuck is wrong with you? I would have wished upon a star if I could have ever done that with my mom. Hell no. My mom is Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican moms don't fuck with that shit. First, first question. Mio, ¿cuántas pasta? How much? Uh... Twenty bucks? No, 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 no. Twenty bucks? You know what I can get for twenty bucks? You want one fucking Pikachu? Daddy? Yeah? Then she gonna grab them and get and go. Maybe I gonna buy them. Maybe. And then you gonna be a good fucking kid the whole time in that store. She ain't gonna look for you. You gonna be right there. Anything on the top shelf, mommy? I got them. Fucking, I don't care. Fucking kids nowadays don't know. Kids nowadays need a solid fucking ass whooping. Straight up. My aunt, coins, I don't know if you know this, but anything within reach that can be swung is a parenting tool. 
mouth for them at this MacGyver fucking fly swatter. Was a bamboo back scratcher stuck into a fucking rubber slipper. So they used to use them for you know, swat flies. Or kids. Or me. Just fucking me. Just fucking me. I was the kid who got whacked. I was the kid who got whacked. And white empties? Woo! Shit, they'll spoil the hell out of you, take you to Disneyland, show a huge party. Oh, you fuck up, your ass getting lit. You gonna have welts, boss, you gonna be limping. The OG empties, they whack you for fucking every syllable they whacking you for. How much times I told you for not disappear in the store? The vocabulary is huge going up, because you learn all the big words. Because Auntie whooped your ass with every syllable. Fuck it, I tell you. And I'm one of those uncles now. All my homies who have kids, I'm Uncle Jakey. Uncle Jakey, Uncle Jakey. I'll spoil the fuck out of your kids. We might have fun. But guess what? Your kids are little shit. I'm gonna whack that fuck. I go whack that fucker. My, my homie's daughter. Fucking walk away. All I heard was her mumble. Fuck you. First of all, I had to stop and think about that shit. Did my fucking six year old niece just say fuck you all the time? Like, I didn't just fuck you all shit? Motherfucker. So before she even had a chance of it, pop! Right outside the back of the head. Turn around. Oh, my God, my God. Yeah. Fucking kids don't know what it is for get their bluff called. I fucking look at this one. I was like, go ahead. Go call your daddy, Alex Steele. Go, go, go tell daddy to go fuck you. Oh, it's about you. Alex Steele, I'm allowed. I would never in my entire life, ever. I fucking, I talked back to my dad one time. Cause you know, kids when they hit that teenage years, all that, they think they all start swinging now, you know? I'm a big man. Fuck you dad, you don't know what you're talking about. My fucking father would put my Portuguese head through a wall. Fat hole, fat holes. Kids from my generation, every single one of me and my friends, Every, all of us fought our parents, our dads, at least one time. Nobody won. Not a single motherfucker won. Some were worse than others. I just put a hole in the wall via my fucking head. My best friend, little Mexican guy, Lorenzo. This guy tells his father, fuck you. And his father looks at him and he's like, yeah? Okay, okay, bud, okay. Puts down his beard. Alexi? Alexi? And my friend, God bless his fucking intentions, because he's a fucking idiot. Who the hell fights their dad? You know who does? People who fucking get lit. He fucking one time came in and he like fucking Goku and fucking. Ah! I see my Uncle Chico one time just. Okay, boy. And right then and there, I was like, oh shit. Oh shit. Run, Lorenzo, run! Don't do it! This motherfucker got the whole Spanish language packed out the side of his fucking head. Fucking, he just was like, Phew. Lorenzo, you good? Fuck, I think he just died. Fuck happened. Uncle Chico! Eh, hola, leyes, cerveza. Uno más, por favor. Uh, okay, I'll go. Whatever you say. I'll grab you one more. Okay. You know, I believe, as how we are as adults now, we gotta teach these fucking kids. We gotta teach these fucking kids. Because none of their parents is doing the fucking job. Wait for mom not looking. Fuck, 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 one time. 
スイスキースイスキーあいないあっちゃかいいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーズいかねえキーなワンファーカーを見つけたときに。You need to get licked now. For all the times you never get licked as a kid. You have passed through licking. Fuck it. Yeah, no, fucking. Cannot, cannot. Hawaiians, we do things different. We do things different. We lick our kids, we get licked by our parents, no matter how old we get. I can be a grown ass man, my mother will still lick me. My mother will have a fucking cane. And she will lick me with the cane. Okay? Fucking. One of my favorite memories back in the day. You're sitting at home, you're just chilling. And all of a sudden you hear that fucking Chinese music come on. And you're like, oh shit! Papa! Mother Poo Man! Mother Poo Man, Papa! Let your grandfather give you 10 bucks. You will run up on that mother poor man like you are falling. You fucking like, you will buy that whole motherfucker out. You don't even run to that motherfucker. You're like, he'll see me. He'll see me. It's a cul de sac. He comes back around. Fucking walk up, be like, Jackie! I like one uh, fried noodle, char siu, shoyu on top. I like a fried chicken.、Um, Two, yeah, two fried chicken, yep, 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 dollar fried chicken, yep, that's the one, that's the one.、Uh, and let me get one,、uh, suicide lot, yep, yep, that's the one, you know that one, you know that one. And, uh, oh, you sure, you sure? Jackie, take that ten dollar bill out your pocket, and you're gonna slam them on the mother poor man's counter, and you'll be like, I got you, Jackie. Give me like three of those ice cream cones, <laughs> and like nine pork ass. <laughs> Fuck this. I'd like to thank you for having me tonight. My name is Nalo from Wa Manalo. Oh, is that the first time? That's what she said. First time ever. First time? Hell yeah. Good shit. Nalo. I thought it was Nalu. Nalo. Like Wa Manalo. No, it's Nalu. Fuck yeah, dog. It is Nalu. Is it? Nalu. Nalu? Nalo. Is Nalo from Waimanalo? From Waimanalo. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Nalo. Yeah. yeah. It's the first Puerto Rican from Waimanalo I've ever seen. It's fucking amazing. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, good shit. First time. There's a lot of first times tonight, man. Second time. It's a good night, man. Everybody doing good? Fuck yeah. Good job, man. Good shit.、Um, Alright, we'll keep it rolling.、Uh, this next guy. Good friend of mine. He's obese.、Uh, I've never seen him higher than tonight ever. This is his highest he's ever been. So, this is gonna be fun, man. Give it up for Mike motherfucking Rayo. Hi. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, you know when you're fat, you sound different when you sit down. <laughs> Man, whoever said don't get high in your own supply ain't bought a lot. Shit.、Sure. <laughs> Buy more, you can sell more and smoke more. I'm so high right now. I, I had a bunch of weed jokes, but、so、I forgot about them. Shit. Got all quiet. It's cool. That's cool. How's everybody doing tonight? Oh, I'm for King's Pizza. Oh, yeah. 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 I used to work at a pizza place back in the day. I,、uh, I'm lazy also. So I used to work for this place called Low Caesars. And they、uh, got tired of me、uh, inside because I used to eat the toppings. So they had like this advertisement that. Every shift, one person had to go outside for an hour to hold this sign that says $5 hot and ready. 
And they said, fuck it, we're gonna make you hold the sign the whole night or day or whatever. You know, it's fair with me, I'm high. <laughs> so I'm over here shaking this sign, everybody at school is making fun of me, throwing shit at me. I said, fuck this shit. So I hired a homeless person for two hits of crack. He was wearing a 2X Little Caesar shirt, just shaking the sign. I ended up helping him out though. He ended up being an assistant manager afterwards, so it was great. Shane turned his life around. I think I was the first person that was started helping for homeless. He ended up getting fired for eating the toppings, but still. <laughs> oh man, what else? What else? Ah. Uh, you ever been so high, you watch Netflix and you forget to skip intro, you start to sing the songs along? That's how high I am. How much time do I have left? <laughs> Shit! This is gonna be fun. So is that Mrs. Potato Head up there, or is that just a potato head? They had a canceled Mr. Potato Head. It's probably because they didn't have a penis piece. You know, if he has that, that'll work. A little cucumber or two, you know, carrot of some sort. What else? Bear with me. This is my first time. <laughs> it's not. Fuck, I've been getting so fat. I am obese. Oh, well, you know, not that fat. Like, I'm fat to the point that I watch, like, my 600-pound life and I feel good about myself. I got low self-esteem, so watching people suffer makes me feel good. Remember March Madness? I enjoyed the shit out of March Madness. All them kids losing that basketball game, crying afterwards. Just music to my ear. I love it when kids hurt themselves. It is just great. Go through adversity. Man. Who's high right now other than me? Yeah. You guys? Yeah. Shit. What do you guys like to eat when you're high? I eat like a motherfucking pregnant person. I eat like sushi, pizza, shit like that. I make sandwiches out of ice cream without ice cream sandwiches. Oh, man. It's fucked up though. Like, I gained so much weight during quarantine and the holidays. And when it opened up, and tier three, I just like eating. I step on the scale, that shit look like a stopwatch. My weight says air. What else? I hop in the shower, change falls out, like 75 cents. I have no idea where it came from. And my bathtub looking like a wishing well. It's been going on for like a month. The wishes don't come true in my house. Everybody just got bus fare. She gets it. I like, I like you. <laughs> I like your laundry money. Oh, shit. What else? What else? I, I, I sell weed and smoke weed, but you know, it's, I do it legally. Well, I tell people it's legally. I say it's from a lab, it's really from a house. You know, shit. I didn't know where I was going with that one. I didn't want to tell on myself. <laughs> America's only watching up here. I hate that shit though. Being a weed dealer and talking to girls. I, I be getting pretty girls just because I sell weed. But I I mean, I, I'm not complaining. I just hate their friends that don't smoke weed. that want to hang out with them. Just hating on me. Like, I, like she deserves better. Like, you know, if you keep on getting my friend high, that's kind of like rape. I was like, you know, if your friend keeps on smoking all my weed, that's kind of robbery. So like, who's committing crime here? <laughs> See? Miss, what are you doing here? I was like, shit. I hate them salty ass friends. Oh, man. I'm supposed to guide the cop. What's a cock blocker to a girl? A puss pusher? A puss deflector? A plus kicker. A cut stop. <laughs> I, I, was just, I just thought of that in my head. <laughs> this is cool. 
Well, like a comedian, you buy from Ross, you know? You thought you got a good deal at first, but I fall apart at the end. Dress for less, I gotta last for half. I'm sweating right now, my nipples are hard. What the fuck is going on here? Oh. This is no accident though. Well it is, I've been fat my whole life. I don't know how what happened. What happened? My mom was like an immigrant from Nicaragua and my dad picked her up. It was a arranged marriage or 